Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Here in front of me is the Dell Dimension 5150, which, as you can clearly see I guess, has seen some better or at least cleaner times at some point. During this video I will do an attempt at cleaning up the machine and hopefully I can also get it back into a working state. If you would think the outside is bad, you haven't seen anything yet. Inside is even worse and there are literally piles of dust everywhere. I got this PC at an auction and could pick it up in a rather industrial setting, which I'm pretty confident is also where the PC was used most of its lifetime. As a start, I use a small compressor in an attempt to remove as much of the dust as possible. Video footage says more than words in this case, so enjoy the process. Now that some of that dust is out of the way, we can start the disassembly, because that will definitely be needed to clean things properly. Under that heatsink we can see a third glimpse of the CPU in this computer, a nostalgic Pentium 4. The heatsink contains, as you wouldn't expect, another massive amount of dust, gathered over the years this PC was in service. After removing the front cover, we can also remove the DVD drive. With so much dust in it, I actually doubt if it would still be able to read any CDs or DVDs. The same goes for the card reader. And by disconnecting the remaining power cables, we can remove the power supply from the case. The inside of it looks quite okay at first glance. Most of the dust got removed and the capacitors look fine as well. Some of the dust almost feels like rust so I hope there is no permanent damage anywhere. After some more cleaning, we can reassemble the power supply and go back to the rest of the case.
This is a Pentium 4 based computer, so I was a bit surprised to see that there is a PCI Express slot here. Somehow I always thought this came a lot later. In this case it's equipped with the video card, an ATI Radeon X300. And again it has built up a proper layer of dust, which I'll remove as good as I can. That looks a lot better. The ATI Radeon X300, in this case equipped with 128MB of memory, was a popular option for this kind of OEM PCs, especially with Dell apparently. It was a real budget card and can be best put next to Nvidia's GeForce 6200. Don't expect top performance here, especially if you expect it to play recent games at the time of release. Nevertheless, together with the Pentium 4, it's not too bad for retro gaming. Next in line is the motherboard which I'm getting out. It doesn't look too bad. And with some more cleaning and removing the old thermal paste, I think we're good. This looks a lot better if you ask me. The hard drive doesn't look as good. There is a thick layer of sticky dust on top of it and cleaning it is not easy at all. It's a Western Digital SATA drive with 160GB and it's dated 22 March 2006. That gives us a good estimation on the age of this machine. After cleaning out the nearly empty case a bit more, we can get our hands dirty on the component responsible for getting all that dust in the case, the front intake case fan. As with all we had till now, I did exactly the same and tried to clean this up as good as I could. So goes for the last stretch to get the case as clean as possible. The worst part here is done and you can see all components in a better shape laid out nicely here. All I can say is that this looks a lot better already. Time now to put everything back together.
It took some serious effort, but seeing this, nobody could tell how this looked like at the beginning of the video. It almost looks brand new. I couldn't have hoped for such a result starting all of this honestly. Before testing if everything still works, or actually works in the first place, as I didn't dare to test the machine before cleaning it, I'm putting a fresh bit of thermal paste, as I didn't have that at hand while cleaning outside. Here we are, not sure what to expect. Those status LEDs at the front can come in really handy to troubleshoot, but at first glance that won't be needed. We got output, so that means the power supply, CPU, memory, motherboard and also the video card are probably doing fine. No drives found, so not much more is happening here, but let's see what the BIOS has to say. The CPU is a Pentium 4, which you already knew, and it's running at 3 GHz. That's interesting, as I recently did some benchmarks with another Pentium 4 at the same 3 GHz. There is a link in the description if you want to find out more about it. Although the clock speed is the same, this CPU is of a newer generation. It's the so-called Prescott 2M or Extreme Edition. It adds another megabyte of cache and it has the 64-bit extensions enabled. We'll see how this affects performance. The memory here is DDR2 for a total of 1 gigabyte with the two models installed. And as we saw earlier, no drives are detected, neither SATA, which you would expect to see the hard drive, nor PATA for the DVD drive. For that one, the fix was not too hard, the drive is configured with the jumper as cable select, and since I connected it to the second connector, without the master it couldn't get detected. Simply changing it to the first connector, we are able to see the drive now. The hard disk is another story, it doesn't seem to be powering up at all. I tested it on another power connector to be sure, but that didn't seem to help. I can't really say I'm surprised seeing how much dust it took honestly. The easiest fix here is to simply replace it. I had this 250 gig drive laying around, which makes up a good match in terms of capacity. That looks better. I'm still getting a warning here as I had enabled the second SATA and IDE ports, but turning these off, as there is no drive connected anyway, fixes that issue. There seems to be an old Windows 7 install on the hard disk from the machine I took it from, so the next step is to get a fresh copy of Windows XP installed. Unfortunately, the DVD drive doesn't seem to open. Again, no surprise witnessing all the dust that came out of this poor guy. Same as with the hard disk, I replaced it with another one for an easy fix. It's a SATA drive instead, but that should be fine. After enabling that second SATA port again in the BIOS, the DVD drive got properly detected and we are able to boot from the Windows XP installation CD.
The installation takes quite its time, but eventually all seems to go fine and we are able to finish up the last steps. Getting all the drivers installed was not that fluent. Although Dell still seems to have the drivers available on their website, it was a real pain to get everything right. I'm so glad this is no longer such a mess with Windows 10 or 11. Let's see now what we've got. System properties shows the CPU and memory as expected. And the hard work to install drivers shows a clean device manager where we can find a card reader, hard disk, Radeon X300, DVD drive and CPU with hyper-threading enabled. To get some more details, let me launch Hardware Info. Again, from left to right, the Prescott 2M at 3 GHz, 1 GB of DDR2 memory in dual channel, and the Radeon X300 SE with 128 MB as a video card. To check out the performance and to compare it with that earlier machine I mentioned and did a video on, let me run Geekbench 2. Seventeen twenty as a result, that's quite a bit higher. And it looks like especially memory performance makes a difference here in comparison with the older machine. Now to test overall performance and also graphical performance, let me run 3 Mark 2001 SE. Visually, all seems to be pretty fluent, despite this PC having a budget video card. Nine thousand three hundred and twelve. That's more than double the number I got on that older Pentium Four with the GeForce Four MX Four Thousand. Not that I'm so surprised by this result. After all, this PC is a few years younger, and at the time, this made a very big difference. That's more or less all I have for this video. To finish, let me enjoy a bit of retro gaming with GTA Vice City. Perfect for this PC. And honestly, after seeing that dirty box for the first time, I couldn't imagine it ever being able to run any game ever again. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and feel free to subscribe for more of the same. Thanks again and hope to see you back here soon.